In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to apologize for the changing of the first lessons, and I want you to know it's not because Sandy made a mistake. It's because I changed the lesson. They had down the, the what we call track one for the first lesson, for the Old Testament lesson, and I preferred track two because I think it speaks uh, to the gospel as well. Um, we could have used those lessons last week for stewardship, I think, very easily. Those two lessons, um, in those lessons, we meet two widows uh, who are very similar. They're both poor. They both put their full trust in God rather than things. And they are both rewarded for their faith. The first is a, is a foreigner a foreigner to the Hebrews. She's from Zarephath, which is a, a city on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, north, northwest of the Kingdom of Israel. Elijah traveled through this land during a famine. And as I read somewhere, as in all famines, the rich complain and the poor starve. The widow was poor, and when Elijah met up with her, she was putting the last scraps of what she had together to have a, a dinner for herself and her son before they would die from starvation. I want you to imagine her in the, in the present day, perhaps as a starving woman with her son or daughter in Somalia or in Syria. And imagine a stranger Hebrew coming up to her and asking for food in the name of the Lord. And imagine this woman putting her faith in God and feeding the prophet. Putting her whole total trust in God, she received enough to eat until the rains came. About a full year. The second widow is the one in the familiar gospel reading that we heard who put two small coins into the temple treasury. Jesus saw her gift. He knew what was in her heart. And he said that her gift, although it seemed very insignificant, was tremendous because she gave all that she had, all that she had to live on. Her gift was an act of putting her faith in God to take care of her. What these two widows did is extremely difficult for us to comprehend. I know there are many of you who have a greater faith than I do, but I would include all of us when I say that no matter how great our faith is, it is profoundly difficult to put all our total trust in God. There's something within all of us that looks for solutions to our problems outside the realm of faith and trust. We think we can solve our own problems. We can conquer all obstacles by ourselves and by our own means. And we are tempted to believe that the proper amount of cash applied in the right places can heal all ills. The great fallacy of our age is that money can solve problems. It's the whole industry of advertising to convince us that we can buy happiness. The fact is that among those blessed with material success, the happiest of, are those who have no qualms about sharing their wealth. The radical message in those two readings is that we must place our confidence in God rather than in wealth or possessions. It's difficult for us to do this because it demands our practicing a forgotten virtue 
the forgotten virtue of humility. Only a humble person recognizes where he or she stands before God. Only a humble person is certain that the presence of God in his or her life is fundamental to happiness. Those two widows gave from their substance all they had. They put their trust in God, shouting with their actions that his presence in their lives was, more, was significantly more important than anything that they owned, even more important than everything they owned. And they give us an example of ideal Christians, humbly trusting in God for their care. May we be empowered to do the same. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.